WQAD News 8, this is WQAD This Week. Good morning. It's Sunday, December 11th. Thanks for joining us for News 8 This Week. I'm Josh Lamberty. John has this morning off. As we approach the beginning of 2023, we're taking a look back at some of the biggest stories this year. No such list could be complete without mentioning the fallout from Galesburg Cottage Hospital. It's a story News 8 Shelby Kluver followed for months, and here's just a brief snippet of those reports. After over a month of investigating, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services say the situation inside Galesburg Cottage Hospital is alarming. Four surveys conducted by CMS from November 19th until December 23rd detail a disorganized, chaotic scene. In November, it was found that 8 out of 30 twice-a-day crash cart checks had not been performed, and 4 out of 15 daily cleanings of the carts and defibrillators had been missed. From March 1st, 2021 to November 17th, CMS found 128 employees had been terminated. Consequently, the ICU had to be shut down in July after all its nurses were pulled over to the emergency room to fill staffing gaps. By mid-November, half of the nurses in both the emergency departments and medical surgical units had either been fired or quit. On Friday morning, long before the rest of the community was awake, these surgical nurses walked into Galesburg Cottage Hospital. For a few, it would be for the very last time. Instead of the hustle and noise of a surgical unit, Friday morning's gathering was somber, set among empty hallways and unused equipment. Roughly 12 hours before these ladies arrived at work, their surgeon had been abruptly fired, along with almost every other surgeon associated with Cottage. One surgical nurse, whose identity we're protecting, told News 8 they threw us away. At one point, the surgical carts were wheeled by one last time. The nurse is telling us they would never again be used for surgery at Cottage Hospital. Downstairs, the HR department was closed, and the hospital's owners, Sanjay and Priyam Sharma, unreachable. On Friday morning, one window at Cottage had been written on by an employee, reading, Liars, shame on the Sharmas. On Saturday night, some of this hospital's worst fears seemed to come true. Signs posted on the doors telling patients and staff that Galesburg Cottage Hospital had closed. The news comes less than one week before the hospital was set to lose funding from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services after government investigators said the situation inside posed risk of serious injury or death to patients and employees. Hours before the news broke, the hospital was evacuated and staff escorted out of the building. This cell phone video showing alleged employees gathering outside moments after it happened. And questions are still circulating on when and if staff will be paid for the week of January 3rd. The hospital's emergency room now blocked off with barricades and the signs to the entrance taped over. The owners of Cottage, the Sharma family, have refused to answer any request for comment. But for now, the sudden closure is having real impacts on patients. How am I supposed to get my meds refilled? I Robert like Smith suffers from painful pain cluster headaches and recently went to Cottage to get treated. I went to a neurologist and he gave me some samples and I get a call Friday that he got fired. They were closing shop. To help, OSF St. Mary now has a new hotline to help cottage patients transfer care. We don't want patients delaying care, um, worrying about or concerned about medical records. St. Mary President Lisa DeKiesel saying her hospital is ready to step up for patients. If we encounter any, any concerns or issues along the way, we'll work through that with our patients. For some patients, it's a rare sign of stability after weeks of turmoil at cottage. Some really powerful images there from Galesburg. Joining us now, Shelby Kluver. Kind of been following this story since the very beginning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the challenges, first and foremost, that the hospital was facing kind of leading up to this closure. So there was a lot that was happening throughout all of 2021, right? You go back to the summertime and the ICU closes because nurses have to get pulled over to the emergency department. There's all this stuff happening in the background. Then there's a CMS investigation into Cottage Hospital in the fall, kind of early winter months. And that's when things really start unraveling fast. So two days after Christmas, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services told Cottage that it's not going to be covering any Medicare or Medicaid payments anymore because the hospital had been violating patient rights, patient safety, employee safety, all of these different departments or parts, right? Um, so then you fast forward to January 3rd, 
the clinics associated with Cottage had filed for bankruptcy because Medicare and Medicaid accounted for close to 75% wow. of all inpatient revenue at Cottage at the time. So things are, you can tell there's some panic in the air for there. They're not going to get that money anymore. By January 7th, all but one surgeon at Cottage had been fired, and then boom, January 8th, the doors are closed. Can you talk a little bit about those first couple of weeks then in January? It really was just the first week in January, right? That all of this is, there's all these questions in the air. And, you know, I kept talking to employees and I kept saying, do you think the hospital's going to close? And it was like such an unfathomable concept. And then what, three days later, it closes. Talk a little bit about the access that you got to, because this was really unusual for a reporter to get the access that you did, but it was so important for the story. Yeah, it was a morning that I'm definitely going to remember for the rest of my life. Um, on Thursday night of the first week of January last year, I got a call from a group of employees around midnight, and they said, you know, in five hours, we're going to be at work, we're going to pack up our stuff, and we're leaving, we're quitting, we're walking out. Do you want to film us walking in? I said, yeah, I'll be in Galesburg in four hours. Just I'm going to go sleep for two, and then I'll be there. And um, when I got there, they were so brave and compassionate, and they invited me inside because they said, what we see here inside is important, and people need to know about it. And what I saw was really crazy, you know, employees crying in every single hallway, people taking stuff off of the walls. There was um, carts being wheeled out that were never going to be used again. There was beds laying empty. I went into this one surgery area that was supposed to have five scheduled surgeries that day that patients had prepared for, the nurses had prepared for, the surgeons were all set to do before they were fired the day before, and the board was just empty. There was no, wow. there was no patients there. Um, records were being shredded. It, it was such a surreal moment because it was that important to people that this story got out. Definitely not what you think about when you think of a yeah. hospital. No, no, definitely not. Um, can you talk a little bit about the kind of next couple of months then for those employees? Yeah. I kind of get emotional when I think about it because it was such a hard time for these people. Um, you know, a lot of the people that worked at Cottage had been there for most of, if not all, of their careers. I literally talked to employees that were born at Cottage, grew up in the neighborhood, and then worked there for five decades. And now all of a sudden it's over. Where do you go from there? What do you do? And then you gotta take into context what else was happening in the world of healthcare in January of 2021. There was widespread nursing, burnout, people walking away from the job, they just couldn't do it anymore. And then you're also dealing with an Omicron surge that really hit this area hard as it did a lot of the country. Um, so a lot of employees were able to switch over to OSF St. Mary, the other hospital in Galesburg. But outside of OSF, there's really not a lot of other healthcare options within a commutable distance of Galesburg. And that is bad news for not only patients, especially rural patients, but also all those employees. And I know of many employees that moved away from Galesburg because there was no other option. And you, you also talk about the, um, the, the employees that are fearing for their jobs. They don't know maybe what's next. Can you also talk about maybe the impact this is having on the community or, or what kind of the, the reaction was from the community there? Galesburg Cottage Hospital opened all the way back in 1893. I mean, can you even imagine that? And now here we are in 2021 and it's just closed abruptly. I mean, this was a real blow to this community. This was a shock. And again, as I mentioned, beyond what the history of Cottage meant to Galesburg beyond what it provided for people outside of the immediate Galesburg area in more rural areas. I mean, this was the heart of the town. This was an institution and it was just gone with almost no warning. Now, um, to stories like these that have so many layers, there's so much to this and there are probably things that you couldn't have found out yet um, what questions are you still asking? What layers are you still trying to peel back? What questions should we be asking? So many questions. I mean, al almost all of these questions went unanswered, right? We still don't have almost all of the questions we were asking a year ago today. We don't know why the Sharmas did this. We don't know what they got out of it. We don't know why they closed the hospital, why they never tried to reopen it. 
what happened to all of the equipment that was inside. I mean, there's so much that we just never even got a hint at. And so when it comes to the continuing story of Cottage, I think we're both looking in the past, you know, trying to figure out why this happened, but looking ahead to what are the Sharma's next moves. Um, and I will say that there was a group of employees last year that tried to put together, or I should say this past year, that tried to put together um, a lawsuit against the Sharmas. And they were kind of met with, unfortunately, the hands of justice not working in their favor mm -hmm. in terms of this case got placed in Michigan. These guys can't make that trip you know, constantly to be spending all this money and paying for this lawsuit and going up to Michigan constantly. So that got dropped as well. So there's just a lot going on that um, I think at the end of the day, people just want answers as to why this happened in the first place. Well, and we know that uh, you will continue following this story and continuing to find some answers. Shelby Kluver, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.